Hi there, welcome back to the Biotech Investor Channel. I'm Wasim Larusi, and today we're kicking off coverage on a company that's been making headlines for its recent FDA approval and impressive stock performance. That's right, Verona Pharma, ticker symbol VRNA. Their flagship drug just received FDA approval and their stock price is already up 26% year to date. If you're curious about what's driving this momentum, and whether it could be the next big opportunity for your portfolio, stick around because we're breaking it all down. In this video, we'll cover everything you need to know about Verona Pharmaceuticals. We'll start with an overview of the company and its management team, then we'll dive into their recently approved drug and how it stacks up against competition, analyze their financials and wrap up with my two cents on share price valuation and some predictions for the future. Are you ready to dive in and see what Verona Pharma has in store? Let's get started. All right, let's jump right into Verona Pharma. They're a London-based biopharma company founded back in 2006 by Professor Clive Page, Dr. Michael Walker, who set out with a really clear goal to shake up the way we treat respiratory diseases, aiming to give patients with COPD, asthma, and other tough respiratory conditions a fighting chance at a better quality of life. In summary, they're all about pushing the boundaries of what's possible in respiratory medicine, and that's exactly why we're keeping a close eye on them. We don't even think of breathing in our daily lives, at least not most of us. But I was very surprised to find out that there are around a million new cases of COPD in the USA alone. So we can't even take breathing for granted. Now let's talk about the folks steering the ship at Verona Pharma. So leading the charge is Dr. David Zuckerdelli, who serves as CEO and president. This guy brings some serious pharmaceutical firepower to the table. He spent years in top-level positions across the biotech industry. Everything from overseeing new drug development to guiding successful product launches, he knows how to turn promising science into tangible treatments. Dr. Zaccardelli's experience is exactly what Verona needs as they push forward in their pipeline. His proven track record in taking innovative therapies from the lab to the marketplace is a massive asset, especially for a company dedicated to solving complex respiratory issues. Under his leadership, Verona seems well positioned to keep moving forward and tackle the challenges that come with developing game-changing medical breakthroughs. Of course, it's not just about the CEO. Verona has a well-rounded leadership team and board of directors packed with seasoned biotech veterans. But if you're looking for a confidence in a company's direction, having someone like Dr. Zaccardelli at the helm is definitely a very good sign. Now let's dive into what everyone has been buzzing about, Verona Pharma's flagship therapy, Otuver. You might also hear it called NC Ventrin nebulized, and yes, it's the one that recently snagged FDA approval for the maintenance treatment of COPD. That approval is a major, major milestone, not just for Verona Pharma, but for the whole respiratory treatment space. Because Otuver tackles two critical issues in COPD, inflammation and bronchoconstriction. Here's the big picture. Otuver is designed to help open up the airways and reduce inflammation, giving patients a better shot at breathing easy and staying out of the hospital. It's a next generation approach that combines the benefits of a bronchodilator and the anti-inflammatory in one treatment. Basically, we're looking at a therapy that could significantly improve daily life for COPD patients. Let me explain. COPD or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease is an umbrella term for a group of lung conditions that can cause breathing difficulties by restricting airflow in and out of the lungs. Now, how big is this problem? In the United States, COPD affects roughly 16 million adults, though plenty more remain undiagnosed. On a global scale, the very much loved World Health Organization estimates that hundreds of millions of people live with COPD, making it one of the leading causes of illness and death worldwide. So what's Autovere's mechanism of action? 
in plain English. Well, Autover is what's called a PDE3, PDE4 inhibitor, which sounds really technical, but here's a quick breakdown. PDE stands for phosphodiesterase, an enzyme that can amp up inflammation and narrow your airways if it's left unchecked. So by inhibiting PDE3, Autover helps relax and widen the air passages. Think of it as unclogging a narrow tunnel. By blocking PDE4, it also reduces inflammation in the lungs. So you're not only opening up the airways, but also calming the fire that causes lung tissue damage. Now, why is that such a big deal? Well, most COPD treatments tackle one or the other, either reducing the inflammation or dilating the airways. But Encephantrin aims to do both at once, potentially offering a more comprehensive relief. That is especially important for COPD patients who need more effective therapies to maintain their better lung function and quality of life. With the FDA's green light, Verona Pharma is now commercializing Otuver in the US. This is a huge validation for their research and development strategy. Plus, it positions them to compete in a multi-billion dollar space that still has plenty of unmet needs. For investors, any positive reception in the market, both from doctors and patients, could potentially translate into very strong revenue growth. Now, when it comes to COPD, the market isn't exactly empty. There are several established treatments out there, and each one tackles conditions in its own way. So let's talk briefly about a few of them and see how they stack up against Verona's medication. First, we have long-acting bronchodilators, LABA or LAMA combos. Examples are Spiriva, Anoroelipta, and Stiolto Respimat. These are inhalers that help relax and open up the airways over a long period of time, improving breathing and reducing exacerbations. They are generally well-tolerated, but can cause dry mouth, cough, and in rare cases, cardiovascular effects. Second, we have inhaled corticosteroids plus LABA combinations. Examples are Symbicort and Advair, and they work by reducing inflammation through the steroid and keeping airways open through the LABA and they can lessen the frequency and severity of flare-ups. Some side effects are risk of oral thrush, hoarseness, and in some cases, a slightly increased risk of pneumonia in COPD patients. Third, we have PDE4 inhibitors. An example is Roflumilast. As a PDE4 inhibitor, it primarily targets inflammation in the lungs, which can help reduce exacerbations in severe COPD. Side effects can include gastrointestinal issues like diarrhea or nausea, as well as potential headache or weight loss. Where Autovair fits is that apart from its dual action in bronchodilation and anti-inflammatory benefits, clinical trials have shown a pretty favorable profile with mostly mild or moderate side effects. Some patients reported things like cough or mild respiratory irritation, but overall, it seems comparable to other or better than existing options. The real draw here is efficacy. If you can reduce inflammation and keep the airways open at the same time, you are potentially giving patients a more comprehensive tool in their fight against COPD. Of course, we'll have to watch how it performs in the real world now that it has FDA approval, but so far, Autovair appears to be a strong contender, especially for patients who don't get enough relief from single action therapies. All right, that was enough. Let's shift gears from the science to the numbers. Let's talk money, baby, because honestly, Q3 2024 data from Verona Pharma is pretty exciting. Here's the quick rundown. First up, Autovair was FDA approved and launched in August 2024. And in just seven weeks on the market, seven weeks through September 30th, it pulled $5.6 million in net sales. Even better, October numbers already beat that entire Q3 figure which signals that doctors and patients are really getting on board. On the cash front, Verona is sitting on $336 million of cash as of September 30th, 2024, with the option to tap into another $425 million loan if they need it. Their debt runs around $150 million, but management still believes they've got enough runway to fund operations at least through the end of 2026. That means they're covered for rolling out Autovair and continuing new clinical trials. Looking at expenses, research and development costs jumped to 10.6 million from just 3 million in Q3 last year, mainly because of two new phase two clinical trials. 
Meanwhile, general and admin expenses rose to $35.2 million, which isn't surprising for a company building a sales team and rolling out a new product. So overall, they reported a net loss of $43 million, typical for a biotech in the thick of a major, major launch. Looking into shares outstanding, between Q2 2023 and Q3 2024, Verona Pharma's outstanding shares knocked up from $79 million to $81.5 million. That's a pretty modest bump, suggesting the company issued new shares to raise some capital or support employee stock programs. It's not a massive dilution by any stretch, but it's always good to keep an eye on these trends as they can impact both share price and overall market valuation. So let's summarize all of this. Given their current cash cushion of 300 million, the additional credit that they can still tap from Oak Tree and the ramping sales from Autobear, they look pretty well covered for the near term. Of course, if they want to scale faster or go after new indications aggressively, they could turn to more financing down the road. But for now, it doesn't look like an urgent must do. So we've covered management, science, finances, and now let's look at their competition. Let's dig into how Autover could stack up against some of the biggest players in COPD. And we will sprinkle in a few ballpark numbers to make sense of it all. Remember, these are still estimates and predictions, so take them with a grain of salt. Let's look at the competition's heavyweights. Spiriva was once a blockbuster for Boehringer Ingelheim, peaking at two to three billion dollars globally. Adver, which is another one, hit over four billion per year at its height, though patent cliffs and generics have chipped away since then. Anora Ellipta and Trilogy Ellipta both rack in hundreds of millions to a couple of billion in annual sales. Roflumi last stays on the smaller side of a couple hundred million per year. Dupixen, on the other hand, is already a multi-billion dollar juggernaut across all indications. But for COPD, it is targeting a narrower population. So most standard inhaled COPD meds run in the 300 to 400 plus monthly range before rebates. Meanwhile, Verona Pharma recently announced a wholesale acquisition cost of about $3,000 per month for Otuver, significantly higher, seven times higher than many inhalers on the market. Keep in mind though, that patients typically don't pay wholesale prices out of pocket and final costs can drop after insurance or negotiated discounts. Honestly, I don't really understand this price strategy, but they must have a really good reason. If I was the CEO, I would probably price it more aggressively to gain more market share, give enough reasons for prescribers to consider my medication instead of the others. But still, Autovere could carve out market share because it combines both bronchodilation and non-steroidal anti-inflammation benefits. Autovere may have an edge in tougher COPD cases. Doctors can add it on top of pretty much any background therapy, which could make it the go-to choice for patients who aren't getting enough relief from standard inhalers, especially triple therapy users still having symptoms. Its elevated price might slow uptake if insurers push back, which we all know they will, considering there are cheaper options, but early prescribing trends suggest strong interest. But this, again, could be those tougher COPD patients. In the first couple of years, Autover could claim a modest slice, maybe 5 to 10% of the overall COPD market, especially among patients running out of options. If real-world data continues to show it reduces flare-ups and improves symptoms, even in severe cases, that share might climb to 10 to 15% over time. With COPD meds already topping $10 billion in the US alone, even a small share could translate into a healthy revenue stream. So between well-established therapies and up-and-comers like the Pixent, competition is fierce. But with Autover's unique mechanism of action, Verona Pharma has a shot at grabbing meaningful market share, assuming they can navigate pricing, reimbursement, and the real-world impact of a premium therapy. So far, those early signals look promising. I do not own any Verona Pharma shares, I miss the train, obviously, but I would love to be part of this adventure and be an investor. But first, I would like to know what is a fair share price value? So to calculate an approximate share price fair value from a value 
investor's perspective, we start by the share count. Verona currently sits at roughly 81.5 million shares outstanding, which could rise a bit if they tap more financing or convert other instruments. So let's assume they stay in the 80 to 85 million range for a while. If Autovere hits a 300 to 500 million annual revenue, which is around 75 to 125 million a quarter, and we apply a five times multiple, we get an enterprise value somewhere in the 1.5 to 2.5 billion range. Now, we can add 300 to 400 million for pipeline upside, considering that some pipeline trials will go well. This is optimistic, of course. We factor in around 183 million of net cash, then we discount a bit for execution risks. Dividing by around 80 to 85 million shares could easily land us near the 28 to 38 mark per share as a rough current fair value. Personally, I would be very happy buying at around $33 a share or even lower. I would be getting a really good deal. Would it get to that point? I don't know, but I plan to start acquiring more shares at the 38 level. Again, this is just one way to slice the numbers, and it relies on a lot of assumptions, like Autovere meeting the 500 million a year sales target, the pipeline progressing smoothly, and no big surprises in the COPD market. As always, do your own homework and approach any valuation with a healthy dose of caution, including mine. But wait, something is wrong. We're seeing Verona stock trading at around $65 a share. And we're wondering why it's up there, especially considering our rough fair value estimate, which is around $33 a share. A few possibilities come to mind. One is that their sales are really at a blockbuster level. We're talking 250 plus million a quarter. That would be very, very, very hard to achieve at such early stage as we can see. So it's important to keep an eye on the Q4 earnings report to see how those sales are ramping up. Or also it could be the early launch hype. With Autovere's stronger than expected initial demand, which is October sales, which already beat Q3 totals, some investors might be betting that the drug will beat typical COPD launch trajectories, leading to quicker and higher peak sales. Or another reason, and let's face it, biotech can be a little bit of a roller coaster. If there is a buzz around potential partnerships, acquisitions, or simply a fear of missing out, shares can overshoot fair value in the short term. So Verona hasn't issued explicit revenue guidance for 2025, at least not publicly in any major announcements or transcripts. Management has shared optimism about Autovere's trajectory, but detailed numbers like official sales target haven't really been spelled out. So if the stock is sitting at around $60 a share, it's likely more about investors' optimism and analyst forecast than a direct company issued revenue promise. Remember, the biotech market can run on high hope just as much as hard numbers. So price swings are part of the game. That wraps up our deep dive into Verona Pharma and Autovere. I hope you found this breakdown helpful and maybe even learned something new about the biotech space. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for more in-depth coverage on biotech stocks and investment insights. Don't forget to turn on those notifications so you never miss an update. And just a quick reminder, everything we've discussed today is for educational purposes only. This is not financial advice, so always do your own research or consult with a professional before making any investment decisions. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.